Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Sukkah, we are up to Perek Dad Mishnah Yud. Today's Mishnah should be Leirun Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aranbaev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Leavdi Ben Chaim Lachaim, for the Refua Shrema, Bacha Bat Esther, and Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, Betoch Shachol Yisrael. This Mishnah teaches how the mitzvah of pouring the water was performed on Shabbat. The Mishnah begins... Just as it was done on a weekday, so was it done on Shabbat. Except that before Shabbat, the Kohen would fill an unconsecrated golden barrel with water from the spring of the Shiloach. An unconsecrated vessel is one that had never been used in the performance of a service in the temple. He would leave it in a chamber overnight to be used in the morning. Since he could not bring the water from the spring to the temple on Shabbat because it is forbidden to carry in a public domain on Shabbat, he brought it to the temple on Friday and left it there until the morning. Now the Mishnah stated that before Shabbat they put the water in an unconsecrated golden vessel. They did not use a consecrated vessel as they did on the other days of Sukkot for the following reason. When an item that is fit to be offered on the altar such as water, meat or flour is put in a consecrated vessel for the sake of a temple service, the item itself becomes consecrated. And, there, and as such, it is subject to the law of Lina, staying overnight, which states that if a sacred item is left overnight, it may no longer be offered on the altar. Therefore, if the water drawn from the Shiloh spring would have been put into a consecrated vessel on Friday and left overnight until it is needed on Shabbat morning, it would be disqualified by daybreak under the law of Lina. To avoid this, the water was first put in a barrel that was not consecrated. Then on Shabbat morning, it was transferred into a consecrated flask from which it was poured onto the altar, as the Rav explains based on the Gemara on page 50a in Mitzchet Sukkah. The Mishnah tells what was done if the water became unusable, it spilled, and the Kohen could no longer go back for more. Nishpechal nitgalta, if it spilled from the barrel or became uncovered, Kohen would refill the barrel with water from the kiyo. The kiyo was a large basin that stood in the temple courtyard. The Kohanim had to wash their hands and feet with water from the kiyo before performing any service in the temple. Now, although the kiyo itself was a consecrated vessel, water that was left in it overnight did not become disqualified. This is because the kiyo was lowered each night into a well so that its water merged with the water of the ground thereby losing its separate identity. When the keel was brought up again, it contained new water, which had not be, become disqualified through lina. So again, the Mishnah says, Nish, nitgalta, if it spilled from the barrel or became uncovered, Kohen would refill the barrel with water from the keel. The reason why uncovered water may not be used is that wine or water that became uncovered, is disqualified from being offered on the altar, uncovered liquids that were not washed or unfit for drinking because a snake may have drunk from them and left its venom behind. Such liquids are therefore disqualified from being offered on the altar because anything unfit to be served to a human king may certainly not be offered to the king of kings. And that is the end of Perik Dalad Mishnah Yud. We continue now with Perik He Mishnah Aleph. The previous chapter taught about the Mitzvah of Nisuch HaMayim, pouring water on the altar each morning of Sukkot. The water for this mitzvah was drawn from the Shiloh spring, like we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 9, very early in the morning before daybreak. During the previous night, great festivities were held in the women's court in the temple in preparation for drawing the water. This celebration, which was called Simchat Bet HaShoeva, is described in the Mishnahs that follows. Now, Simchat Bet HaShoeva literally means the joy of the house of the drawing. It was given this name based on the Pasuk in Sefer Yeshaya, chapter 12, verse 3, Ushafte Maim Bisason, you shall draw water with joy. And the house of the drawing refers to the place where the festivities were held. The first Mishnah begins by citing a ruling from chapter 4, Mishnah 1, and explaining it. He Halil Hamisha Vishisha. The Mishnah stated the flute is played either on five days of Sukkot or on six days of Sukkot. This refers to playing the flute at the Simchat Bet HaShoeva. Now the Rav explains many types of musical instruments were played at the Simchat Bet HaShoeva as stated in Mishnah 4. The Mishnah singles out the flute because it could be heard over the other instruments. And the Mishnah says, doche lo at the Shabbat velot yom tov. It does not override the laws of Shabbat or Yom Tov. Playing a musical instrument is forbidden on Shabbat and Yom Tov. The rabbis prohibited playing a musical instrument on Shabbat or Yom Tov for fear that it will break and someone will repair it, which is a biblical transgression.
Therefore, it was not played on the first night of Yom Tov, leaving only six, ni- six nights. And if Shabbat fell during Cholam Moed, it was played on only five nights. Now, before describing the Simchat Bet HaShorevah in the next Mishneot, the Tana makes a general statement. Amru, they said, Kol mi shelo ra Simchat Bet HaShorevah, lo ra Simcha meyamav. Anyone who did not see the Simchat Bet HaShorevah never saw true rejoicing in his life. And that is the Nabotayv Tariz Mishnayami. Bauch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.